We return to our series on migration from Central America. We brought you stories of violence and insecurity driving people toward the U.S., but there are economic reasons, too. In Honduras, where agriculture sustains many people, long-term drought caused in part by climate change is forcing many to leave. In tonight's report, produced in partnership with the Pulitzer Center, special correspondent Marcia Biggs and videographer Julia Galeano-Rios travel to Lim Pira State in far western Honduras. It's a typical morning for Catalina Ayala, grinding corn to make the day's tortillas. It serves as daily bread here in rural Honduras, where families live off the land, growing corn, beans, and coffee. Her husband, Alfredo, has been a corn farmer all his life. But this is the last of the family's harvest. How much reserve do you have? We have enough corn for two months, 60 days. Don Alfredo is one of almost four million people struggling to survive in what's called Central America's Dry Corridor, an area that stretches from Costa Rica to the Mexican border. Historically known for its irregular rainfall, it earned the nickname in 2009 after a drought killed over half the crops in the region. Accelerated by climate change, rainfall in the western Honduras state of Limpida has fallen sharply in the last five years. It's just all dead. Don Alfredo dead. says 10 years ago he could harvest around 4,000 pounds of corn each season. Now he says he's lucky if he gets around 500. He says he's lost over 90 percent of his crop, and what was left was not even enough to live on. Okay, so he's saying that when there is rain, when there's no crop, uh, no drought, uh, that the the corn crop obviously is much bigger, much wider. The kernels are much bigger, um, and they had to forego planting them because of the drought. You see what came uh, because of the drought. So they started planting these maicillos, which is what they used to feed the animals. Don Alfredo's like most farmers we spoke to, who've started planting a lower quality corn called maicillo, which is more resistant to drought. Traditionally used as chicken feed, it may keep them alive, but no one will buy it. What is the maicillo like to eat? Just bring it over. It's not the same. It's a different flavor. The tortilla is darker. Is there any hope of recovering that land, recovering those crops? There's nothing we can do about the drought. While wealthier farmers can install irrigation systems, Don Alfredo says he doesn't have the cash. And without a crop, he'll soon be out of a home. He used to pay the rent on his land with a percentage of his crops. And on good days, he's able to find work as a day laborer for around $4 per day. Today was not one of those days. How bad is it for your family right now? I am desperate. That is my personal situation and that of many other families here. We are desperate. Not having food makes one desperate. Not eating for just one day causes distress. Will you leave? We'll have to get out of here. To find a place where we can have a better life. According to the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization, there's been a surge of migration from rural areas in Honduras, where farmers lost an estimated 82 percent of corn and bean crops last year from lack of rain. And for coffee farmers, yet another problem, an epidemic of rust fungus, roya in Spanish, an insidious plant disease they liken to cancer, which grows quickly in dry, warm climates, destroying entire coffee plantations. Herman Oriana is an agricultural engineer. He did his postgraduate research in the U.S. before returning to his tiny village in Honduras to work on water sustainability projects. He took us to see the effects of the roya, its signature, this yellow discoloration. When the temperature is lower, 77 degrees Fahrenheit or lower, this fungus will not spread. But when the temperature is really high, the climate hot and dry, it will breed on one leaf, to another leaf, and eventually to the entire plantation. Honduras is the fifth largest coffee producer in the world. And Oriana says close to three million people depend directly on the industry. But he says 20% of the people in his village alone have left. 
In the last four years, there have been plantations like this one, left completely abandoned. Here one can fertilize, eliminate, prune, and clean. But the farmers haven't done any of that because they know this can't be saved. How catastrophic is this, the Roya, for this region, which depends so much on coffee production? Simply put, there are families that won't have anything to eat because there are entire communities that depend totally and completely on coffee. The kids need to study, families need to eat. If they can't sell this, the only option is to immigrate. If this continues, there will be more violence, more poverty, more hunger, more illegal immigration. It's not a problem in Honduras, it's a global problem. Some farmers are sticking it out, trying to fight the problem. When the Roya hit crops in 2012, farmers like Timoteo Cruz Alberto started planting a new type of coffee called Limpira, thought to be resistant. It took three years for him to find out they were wrong. We had hoped that they would be the solution for coffee farmers, but we've seen that's going to be difficult. As you can see, they are all affected. So we will pick the beans from this plant and then it will die. If the price of coffee was higher, we'd have the money to combat the problem. But instead, the alternative will be that maybe we'll have to join the caravan. Without this product, we don't have anything else to turn to. There's no other product. This product is wonderful because it's the most socially conscious we have in our country. It employs so many people. Here you will see we have 20 people here cutting. Without this product, these people would have no other work. For now, Alberto's crop still yields results. Coffee beans spill into buckets. Families working for him bring their children on a winter break from school to pitch in. We asked them if they were worried about what Roya could do to the future of coffee farming. Roya means no work, no coffee, no work, no money. This farm dies, what are you going to do? We have to go. Adonde, where? I don't know. Maybe the U.S. again. For Don Alfredo, the decision to leave is more urgent. He and his wife are eating the last of their crop. And Catalina suffers from diabetes, which requires expensive medication. He's tried to leave before. In 2001, Don Alfredo hired a coyote to smuggle him into Arizona, surviving for over a week in the desert with no food before being caught and deported. You're going to go through all of this again without any guarantee that you'll be able to stay? I am 49 years old and I already feel old, but the situation forces me to go. Have you heard anything about the president, Donald Trump? <laughs> he is tough. That's what we hear here. He is tough. But what can you do? I mean, do you not worry about arriving and then just being sent back, being deported again? Yes, I worry, but the hunger forces me to go. The day closes again without rain, and those who have lived off this land for generations face yet another day without food. Closer to the day when many will leave this way of life behind. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Marcia Biggs in Limpira, Western Honduras.